Do I have a sponge in here? I do! Hello everybody, this is me and welcome back to another video. Today I have another tack cleaning Q&A for you guys because I feel like I haven't had a little sit down and a chat with you guys for a while. I put a little community post tab on my YouTube to um, ask you guys if you had any questions and there were so many, I think there were almost like over a thousand. So I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. But also I thought it'd be nice to just have a little chit chat. So I love these sort of videos, putting them on in the background while I'm doing something. So I'm also gonna be doing some tack cleaning today because I always find that very satisfying. However, this is actually one of the first times where I'm doing a tack cleaning Q&A but most of my tack is actually clean so I thought what I would do today is actually clean my leather head collars because I feel like it's one of those things like tack cleaning you always think oh it's been like a little while I need to clean my tack but you never really think about cleaning your head collars um, this one here definitely needs a little bit of an oil and a bit of TLC so I'm gonna be getting along with that while I answer you guys' questions because there is a lot to update you guys on all right, let me grab my phone and have a little look through my list of what I have. Oh, I'm gonna have to do this one first because this was one of the questions that came up the most and also at like my meet and greets and things. This is one that you guys often ask in real life as well. And that is, what is my favorite Lemure matchy matchy set? And I also got asked, what is my favorite set on both Joey and Casper? Um, so those are kind of two different questions, but kind of the same in one. I'm just gonna open up my little pouch that has my tack cleaning bits and bobs in. Now, this is a really tricky one because I feel like it Gem, gem, it really does depend on what time of year it is. So in the spring, summer, I do like to wear more sort of pastel-y colors. Um, and then in the winter, I wear darker colors because we have the mud and the rain and things in England. Um, so I'll go for winter. Okay, so the answer that I normally tell people is the new Bluebell because it's so similar to my first ever Lemur saddle pad, which is Blue Brie. And I think that color on a gray, especially a gray like Casper, really pops. I also think that the um, Benetton Blue, it's kind of like a royal blue color, um, looks really nice on Casper too. Basically, blues look really nice on grays. Joey, it's a tricky one. I haven't actually thought about what I'd do for Joey. Casper's easy because I've had him so long. Joey like looks good in every color, but he's changing color so much. Like He's getting a lot lighter now. I really like the Loire saddle pads on him. I'll, I'll come back to Joey. I'll do the autumn winter colors first. So I really like the um, oak. It's like a really dark sort of green. I think that looks really nice. I also like the new fig. I think that's really nice. Again, like it's a slightly darker color, but it just has like a pop of color rather than being like really bright. Um, summer colors. That's so, oh, this is this. I'm really bad at answering these things. Joey, oh, what color would I say looks best on Joey? The Hunter Green looks really nice on him. I do like that. I'm saying a lot of greens. I'd say my favorite, and then I also got asked what my favorite color is. Again, it changes all the time. I really like um, Lilac. I think overall that's probably been my most favorite color over the years. Like when I was a kid, I had a Lilac bedroom. Um, basically pastel colors. Pastel colors are really like dark colors, like a really dark green, that's really nice. Like nature-y kind of colors, sage green, that's really pretty. So yeah, those sort of, yeah, greens and lilacs, I'd say. Probably are my favorite. Okay, what else have you guys asked? Let's have a little look. So this is actually, this one's actually really interesting. It's a little bit more advice rather than a question. And that is, how did I teach Joey and Casper to be like good on hacks? Because if you didn't know, before I got Joey and Casper, I think Joey had been on hacks, but he ha hadn't really done like any road work. Cause I think his previous owner lived quite near like a busy road. And then um, same with Casper, he hadn't really, he'd done like hunting and things and hacking, but none, neither of them had hacked on the road. So it was really funny, the first time I took Joey out hacking, we literally went down to the bottom of the road and back. And the whole time he was very confused because he came from quite a big event yard. He was like, where are the other horses? I think he was used to like hacking with other people. He was like, um, so he just kept neighing the whole time. And then Casper was a very spooky boy. He didn't really understand cars, parked cars. Um, and he spooked at a parked car, span around and went cantering down the lane and little like 
12 year old me was like, oh my goodness. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that happened. Uh, I'd say the best thing that I did with Joey was one of my neighbors very kindly offered to go hacking with me on her older, more experienced horse. So um, the first sort of hacks I went on with Joey was with another horse where he could kind of learn what happens when a car goes by. Even like um, something that I'm gonna do with Duke when I eventually take him on little walks and maybe little hacks. I feel like that'd be really fun. Like have Joey and then like my family can walk along with Duke. Obviously when, when I feel like <laughs> he's at that level, uh, cause that might be a little bit exciting. Um, what we might do is just like, because we live on a very middle of nowhere country lane, um, get one of my family members to drive their car and drive past Duke and obviously if he doesn't like it we can make the car stop and things and we can do it with our own time rather than the general pub public which can be uh, a little bit hit and miss on the country lanes um, but no I think that'll be really good practice for him just getting someone to drive a car by him maybe like my dad can go on his bike because that's something else that you see we could fire up the old tractor because we have a lot of tractors where we live, but that might be going a little bit too far. But um, so yeah, my best advice is to go with a more experienced horse that's done hacking before, is super chilled, and then your horse will just want to follow along with them and will kind of learn from the good behavior. So best of luck with your young horse, by the way. <laughs> okay, this is a quick fire question. Um, what's my favorite color apart from gray? I don't know if it is grey, I say this every winter because when winter comes around and there's a lot of tack cleaning, not tack cleaning, horse cleaning, thinking about tack cleaning, some tack cleaning. When winter comes around and there is a lot of horse cleaning, basically mud and stable stains everywhere, I go, no, greys are not my favourite colour. Why have I done this to myself? So I think if I had to choose a different coloured horse, I would say like a mud coloured one, so like a bay, but um, <laughs> I do really like duns. I think duns are really cute. I do also love a um, Apache pony, so like a piebald or a skewbald or a tri-coloured. I think they're adorable as well. So oh, this is me. I just, I just choosing, <laughs> choosing colours and things. There's so much selection. I just, I love them all. Like when people always ask me what my favourite horse breed is, I can literally list off seven because there are so many different ones like I love cobs I don't own a cob but I love cobs I love Connemaras I love warm bloods I love little w Duke who's a little Welshy so it's tricky you can't just pick one <laughs> so one question that I actually got quite a lot was when do you think I'll retire Casper now if you don't know how old Casper is he is my 16 he'll be 17 actually in May he's a Connemara um, I've had him since I was 12 so in January I would have had him nine years which is really scary um, but yeah let me just grab my leather conditioner because that's what I'm gonna be using next so I think all horses is when you decide to retire them is on like so many different reasons so Mickey I probably retired a little bit earlier than some horses just because he has quite a lot of health issues he has Cushing's he has his respiratory problem he's got his skin conditions and also I was getting quite big for him and he's very happy just like chilling in the field obviously I do a lot of enrichment with him with me doing my videos and like just for example we did food battle the other day he absolutely loved that so he doesn't live a boring life at all and he has Duke now as his little companion that keeps him exercised because they go zooming around the fields I also take Mickey on walks with Casper he has no health problems at the moment Touchwood, um, and he's doing really well of course like, I'm not riding him as um, much as I did when he was in his prime or as hard as I did I still ride him pretty regularly like five, six times a week, maybe five, depending on how he's doing. Um, but a lot of that is just like light hacking because that's his favorite thing. I need to take him on some more big hacks because he absolutely loves it, especially when we go to the forest. He goes zoomies. Um, I don't do as much schooling with him, <laughs> which um, I probably should do a little bit more, but it's just not his favorite thing. Like I'll school him, but I won't just do like pure flat work. I'll always put some poles up because, you know, I, he's done so much for me over the years. Like he owes me nothing. As long as he's happy, that makes me happy. So um, when I do school him, I do like trot poles, 
bending, even bending poles, he loves that. <laughs> That's really fun. So I just try and make things interesting for him. Um, and yeah, he also still loves jumping. I jumped him yesterday, just kind of like around our school, just put up some like 85 centimetre jumps, just popped around a little course and he loved it. So should maybe get him out jumping again a little bit more, but you know, I want to be careful with his legs and that kind of thing. But no, he's super chilled. Like 19 isn't that old, not 19, 17 <laughs> isn't that old. So um, it's one of those things where I'll just see how he goes, chat to the vet about things, but he's a very happy, healthy horse. So probably not anytime soon. I'll probably just do like lighter work with him. Like I don't compete him anymore because that wasn't really his favorite thing. He got a little bit nervous and anxious in a competition environment being around that many horses. Um, Cause I don't really know much about Casper's past, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Just see how he goes. He seems to be doing really well. So probably won't be changing anything to his routine anytime soon. All right, what else did you guys ask? When did I last fall off? Okay, so this one is a funny one. This was on Casper. When was this? This was back in the summer. It's autumn now. So, must have been around August time, maybe July. Um, and we were taking photos for the new autumn winter collection for Lumiere. I was wearing the fig at the time, if you want to look back at those photos and be like, that was the day Esme fell off. Um, so uh, we were doing this shot where we were cantering up and down the bridle path and Casper I always describe as he has two speeds. He has like, tort it's like tortoise and hare, like on a lawnmower. He has like tortoise mode or potato mode that I call it, where he's super chilled. It's just like going along at his own pace. And then he has like, Spice Casper, where he's very excited, zooming around, and absolutely loving life. So, um, he was very chill to start with, taking lots of stills, just standing there like, I'm a beautiful horse, take some photos of me, he loves it. And then we decided to do some cantering shots, obviously after I warmed him up and things. We decided to take some shots from a different angle. So, for the photographer kind of like decided so we could get a different angle hid in a hedge or a bush like under a tree and I don't think Casper quite realized he was there so we were cantering up this hill hedge line on our side photographer was kind of like here and Casper was like la -da -da -da, like zooming along going really fast and then suddenly in the corner of his eye he was like the paparazzi <laughs> he was like there's someone there and um he like he I don't know what he did he kind of like his bum went in a different direction to like his legs and he basically did like a banana he kind of went whoop and um i went to the side and <laughs> slipped off the side landed on my bum i was fine um landed on my bum quite a few times in my riding career but anyway yeah i went out the side door basically because i was not expecting it at all and um with casper because he's smaller i feel like when he does like a little move like that, because there's kind of less to cling on to. I feel like Joey, because he's a bigger horse, there's more to cling on to. I was having this conversation with a friend actually the other day about if it's better to fall off a pony or a horse, because on a pony, you're lower to the ground, so you have less distance to fall. But then um, on a horse, because you have more distance to fall, you have more time to kind of in the air, move around and get into a good falling position. like. I've fallen onto my feet quite a few times, which I'm very lucky, um, rather than like <laughs> in a not so good position. But yeah, let me know if you prefer to fall off a pony or a horse in the comments below, because I was like, probably horse. And they were like, no, 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 pony, close to the ground. Okay, what else do we have here? Have I ever been, ooh, this is quite an interesting, this one's juicy. So somebody asked, have I ever been let down when buying a horse? Now, let me tell you, if you are in the market for buying a horse or a pony, it is brutal out there. It is, I took over a year to try and find Casper. And as much as I love him, don't get me wrong, he, he, he's not the easiest of horses <laughs> or ponies. Um, and when we were trying to find Casper, there was actually one horse that I tried and I really liked it and we were gonna buy it, but then they decided not to sell it. And then with Joey, there was a horse that I liked and um, in the end, it had a medical problem that I would rather my horse not have. So that was a little bit disappointing. So if you're at the moment looking for a horse, especially as I haven't even looked at the horse market, like 
anytime recently because obviously Duke we re we rehomed him so um, that was a little bit different but I know that horse prices have gone up loads since the pandemic so I was very very lucky getting Joey when I did because we literally picked him up like I think it was like a few days before the first lockdown so that is crazy so if you're looking for a horse then best of luck and I hope you find your hot horse all right what else do we have Okay, so another question I got asked a lot was what is the highest jump I've ever jumped? Now, I don't actually know because I've been jumping quite a lot in, you know, my riding journey. I'd say Casper, maybe like a meter 15. Joey, probably around a meter 15, a meter 20, maybe something around there. Like, but this was probably like a fence at the end of a grid. And then um, one of the fences that I jumped really big on was a, um, it was the Breen's horse, Dougie, who is a Grand Prix horse. I was so grateful and so lucky to be able to have a lesson on him. That was incredible. We did some grid work. And I think the fence at the end was around a meter 25, maybe a meter 30, maybe a meter 20, something around, around those lines. But I would like to do like a Chase Me Charlie at some stage on Joey, I think that could be really fun. I would like to do it with a grid though, so then we have all the striding set up nicely. Because Joey can jump, he has a really nice jump on him. He's just a little bit lazy in the canter. That's what we're working on at the moment with him. So I'll be going into a fence and it's kind of like maybe three strides before he'll pick up the canter a little bit more and then he'll jump the fence really nicely, but it's in between the fences. He's just like, oh, don't need to try like even if I jump smaller fences he's like ah oh, this is too easy don't need to try kind of jumps it like a cow I'm like Joey <laughs> you're supposed to be a show jumper um I remember the first time I did some like bigger fences with my instructor she was like oh my goodness he can jump and I'm like yeah he can <laughs> I know he can he's just a little bit on the lazy side but we're getting there and he loves it so um, I'm actually super proud with how much Joey's jumping has come on recently I just need to say this all the time just need to go out there do some light show jumping with him. Boom. We've been having a lot of lessons though, which has been so good for him. And I'm just really happy. He's coming along nicely. It's taken a while, but we're getting there. <laughs> okay, this is a little quick file on, which is fun. What do you put on first, the saddle or the bridle? So I'm definitely a saddle before the bridle because if your horse is like tied up or has a head collar on, then um, you don't have to like put the head collar back on if that makes sense but also I think it's nice to put saddle on first in the winter because I, I always taught this by my instructor that if you put the saddle on it kind of warms up their back and warms up their muscles a little bit more so they are ready to go um I used to put bridle on first actually which was one of like my first videos loads of people were like oh my goodness why'd you put the bridle on first well it wasn't that I put the bridle on first I think it's because I had a martingale so maybe that's why I put the bridle on first I can't remember this was so long ago um, but I did like a GoPro tack up with me and that was actually one of the first videos that got views on my channel that weren't just my friends and family so there's a little fun fact for you guys okay can't believe I said that I was actually like quick fire question went and talked for like a few minutes on <laughs> bridal or saddle first let me know in the comments below bridal or saddle which one are you um or which one to put on first oh this is really it's really Mm, this is tricky. What is something you would tell new riders who are starting at a later age? So I would say welcome to the equestrian community. Um, I hope you find some lovely people out there. Um, I'd say riding horses is tricky like learning any new skill and I feel like learning a new skill as an adult compared to a child is very different because with an adult I feel like you kind of know more of what's good when as a child you're just like oh this is fun and if you uh not as good at something it doesn't really matter because you're enjoying it so i say the main thing is just to enjoy what you do um i hope your legs are feeling all right because i know that if i've i've had like breaks and things from riding not that long of a break it's more if i've just been traveling for a while and haven't sat on a horse for a few weeks oh my goodness that first ride back 
your thighs feel it. So I hope your, your thighs are okay. Maybe have a nice hot bath if <laughs> your legs are aching. Um, just have as many lessons as you possibly can. This is what I always, when people always ask me for riding advice, obviously I can't be like, oh, you need to put your heels down more or you need to have softer hands or anything like that because I can't see you ride. But my best tips for like riding in general and being an equestrian is, um, there are so many different ways to do things so if you ever don't understand something always ask questions you can't ask too many questions because with horses and with riding you you never stop learning because all horses are different as well so something that I might do with my horses might be different to what you do with your horses or for example when I ride Joey I ride him differently to when I ride Casper so yep have like have as many lessons as you can, ask as many questions, and just have fun really, listen to your instructor, maybe have like lessons. I always think it's good to have one instructor that's like your instructor that sees you regularly, knows if you have a horse, knows you, or knows your horse, that kind of thing. But then I also think it's really good to have lessons from different instructors as well, because there might be things that they have a different perspective on, or some things that your other instructor might not notice. So I think that's also really useful. It, I always think it's also really good if you're new to riding to ride as many different types of horses as possible and kind of find out what sort of horse you like as well like if you prefer something that's a little bit more speedy something that's a little bit taller smaller I don't know horses are so different I feel like it's kind of like driving a car when you get in like a different car you're like oh this feels very different but it's kind of the same thing that's the best way I can describe it but anyway I have a few more questions I think that's that is ah, I've dropped everything I need to get some more stuff to clean. I'll be back in a sec. I am back with items to clean. I have my tall boots. All right, so while I clean my boots, I will go over the last question, which knowing me, I will probably chat about for a very long time. And that question is, would I ever move houses? Now, I am very lucky to say that I was gonna say lucky, we all were probably very confused. I am moving house, I'm leaving. Not really leaving because I'm not moving far away. Um, I know the first question everyone will be asking is are the horses moving too? Are they leaving? All that kind of stuff. So I am very lucky that I have bought a house which does not seem real, still does not seem real um, that that is coming out of my mouth. Um, I'm 21 now and I've got to the stage where I'm going to be flying the nest. Um, if you guys didn't know, I'm very lucky to live on site at the moment with my parents um, where the horses are. So don't worry, I won't be moving far away. I will be close enough distance to see the horses all the time. I'm going to be here all the time anyway, um, but it just means that my work life has a little bit of separation because at the moment, don't get me wrong, absolutely love my dad, but I live with him, I work with him, even at weekends when I'm just chilling here, I'm with him when I'm watching TV, just things like that. So I think that will be really nice. And also just, I think I'll be, I don't know, I just, I'm very excited to have my own like little space and also I know that you guys will be asking lots of questions about the house. Now the plan is to do like a little bit of a renovation series because I know it's not horsey but I think you guys all absolutely loved my stable renovation series and I've got to say this cottage does need some work so I think you'll be you guys will enjoy seeing the satisfying process of me sort of doing it up and everything and um, also like I have so much to talk about this but I don't want to give too much away because I never thought it would be possible for me to move out at this age because as of, of course we've got the horses here and I can't be too far away from the horses and I never thought I would be able to there aren't many houses around here because I live in the middle of nowhere and I never thought I'd be able to find a house that I could afford in the local area, which I actually found this house because I was riding, I was riding past on Joey on my local hacking route and I saw the for sale sign, went straight onto the internet and I was like, oh my goodness, did like loads of, loads of maths, loads of mathematics to see if I could afford it and all that kind of stuff because 
YouTube, I'm very lucky that I've, it's been my, well, I've been doing YouTube since I was 15 and it's been my job for the last, well, it's my full-time job for the last three years, but like a little bit more than that because I've been doing it, I've been doing this a while, but I absolutely love it and I'm so grateful for you guys watching my videos because you are the reason that I'm able to do this. So thank you very much. Um, so yeah, that is the exciting news. I'm not going far, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm not going far and I'm gonna be here all the time anyway. But I think it would just be nice to, I'm just excited to have my little kitchen and living room and maybe one day I'll have a, have a little canine pal to join me there as well. But anyway, that is, that's that because I'm gonna be doing a whole sort of like explanation video about the cottage that kind of thing give you guys a little look inside sneaky peek and then like the plans of how I'm gonna do it up and things like that but I don't want to chat for too long because I know this video is already gonna be so long anyway but I'm just very grateful very excited and yeah, so thank you so much everybody for watching today's video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe because it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it and I'll see you all next time. Bye!